and we give you God all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. It's all about Him. It's not about us. Amen. You know, we uh, look at today's society and the way the things that are changing, and it's it's in, uh, how can I say it? You've got an illegitimate individual that is uh, sitting somewhere and and pulling all the strings and doing stuff that it wasn't of God. So, you know, we wonder what happened? What really happened? Why did this all go along? Well, the Lord has been really dealing with me on this, and it, and it goes in to our scriptures today. And before I get started, we're going to open up with prayer. And I'd like Kirk to uh, lead us in, in the word of prayer and uh, pray for Garth and Virginia, wherever they're at, that they have a safe safe time and whatever they're doing and everything. Kirk? Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done yes. for us. We thank you that we're here to here today together. There's been times when there's been no place for some of us to go. And we just thank you that you provided a way. Yes. We thank you for bringing Gar from a distant place back here to us. Yes. And we thank you for his leadership. And we thank you, God, that uh, you've done so many things and that our steps are ordered by the Lord and that Gar is in the place where he's supposed to be right now today. And we, we thank you, God, for anointing him to perform the task that you have ordered for him in these last days. And Lord, we, we ask you that you give us willing, obedient hearts to follow the shepherd that you place for us. And we thank you, God, for each gift that is, that is yes. here and assembled here. Lord, only you know the treasure that is in each of our hearts. Many times things aren't manifested uh, until it's, a, until it's the right time. And we thank you, God, that here we are in these last days, and soon we'll be, be glorified with you in heaven, and everybody will be singing your praises and talking about all the all the things that we've overcome, uh, beating the dickens out of the devil on this earth. Right. And Lord, we yes. thank you that uh, you've given each of us uh, the weapons that we need That's right. to prevail. Thank you for bringing Mike with the word and anointing him. And Lord, we just thank you for uh, the praise and worship that we had. And yes. Your presence is here upon us. And help us to hear and listen and uh, heed your word in Jesus' name. Yes, in Jesus' name. Uh, thank you very much, Kurt, for that. And again, Jason did a wonderful job, uh, anointed job putting that all together because the, the music went, is going right along with the message. You know, this is what it's all about. So, the Lord has really been dealing with me on this. Why, why is all this coming along? And and we see today, he showed me that you have church, per se, of different denominations. You go back to the uh, when the church was first established, uh, Peter went out and preached, and the Lord added daily. He added that daily there uh, to the people because the people were out talking to other people uh, of prophecy, not prophecy, but uh, what was going on with Jesus. They were telling him the, the good news, the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God. See, this is where the so-called uh, religious church, not the remnant church, but the religious church, that's their Opium is religion of uh, uh, smoke machines, fog machines, and ripped jeans and all that other stuff going on. It's a big show. Everybody goes away with their feelings. Everybody's feeling great until something hits and they totally wipes them out. They just don't have nothing. You know, like Jesus said, you don't build your house upon the sand. And this is what's going on. There's a lot of people, they think, if I stood in, in my garage and said, I'm a pickup truck, that doesn't make me a pickup truck. It's the same way with going to church. Just because you go to church doesn't make you a Christian. This is where things have got off because man has got into their own thing of, uh, I'm going to preach it this way or do it this way or build my church up this way. No, it's all about the kingdom of God and going out and spreading the good news. Yeah of Jesus Christ 
you know, uh, I'm seeing a lot of stuff going on, but the main thing, and we're going to go to Scripture, uh, this is Psalms 111, verse 10, and if somebody has it, if they would, uh, go ahead and read it out. Thank you, Lord. Verse 10? Yes. 111 Psalms and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do His commandments. His praise endures forever. Amen. You see, today people don't have the true fear of God, which is reverence. The reverence. It's not taught in the church. Maybe in some of the remnant churches that you folks go to. But in, for, in what I'm trying to say, the Lord, is there is no fear. This nation doesn't fear him in reverence like they did in before World War I, World War II. Everybody was fearing the Lord in a good way of reverence. They would reverence him. The, the uh, churches would praise and worship, and they would uh, be walking in holiness. The individuals would be. But we see today uh, the television, tell a vision has come in, and all the other little bling-blings of the phones, the social media, everybody getting wrapped up into it, and they've gotten totally away from focusing in of the things of God, the majority. Yes, there is the minority that is doing what they're supposed to be doing, but for the majority of people, this is the reason why things are happening the way they're happening. It's because they, the nation, they want the nation to come together, but it's so divided now in 14 different pieces of the pizza that it's, there's no way because the only, the only true factor for this nation to come back together is fearing God and walking in holiness. Because we've got so much stuff coming into our ear gates, eye gates, then it comes out our mouth gate the wrong way. And Pastor uh, Garth, he has been ministering on, you get basically you get what you say, which is true. If you speak the word of God and the scriptures of God and believe it by faith in your heart, it's going to come to pass. And when the enemy comes to you and says, <laughs> you're not going to get that. No, he's a liar. Everything that he says and does is a lie from the pits of hell. He tries to drag us down into the mully grubs. So I want to I want to get a pity party going. You know, I've been on them before. I'll be honest with you. I'll be the first one to say I've been in there. But as I walk, walking along, getting closer to God in a daily walk, praying, uh, it says in the word, uh, I think it's in, uh, I believe it's in Timothy, pray without ceasing. Well, you can only pray in the natural so long. And that's the reason why you have to start praying in the Spirit all the time. Uh, even when I, as I drive everywhere I go, you know, I'm always praying in the Spirit because I'm listening, trying to tune in like that old-time radio, you know, the tube radio where they'd tune that thing in, get it right on the station, you know. And so that's what we've got to do is by praying in the Spirit and the Holy Ghost is tuning in to the right frequency because that God is always talking. Yeah. He's always, the information highway of heaven is always going. Yeah. But are we wanting to take the time, lay all this stuff down, I'm preaching to myself, <laughs> and lay it down and tune in because the things that are getting ready to come to this nation is inevitable. It's going to happen. Yeah, It's on its way. Yes, there will be revival, but revival and the, uh, or what do they call that? Revival, and there's another word I'm trying to think now. But anyway, where the souls, the harvesting of souls are going to come in only when there's persecution going on. Look what's going on in Canada right now. They've, they've blocked that one church, took that pastor to jail. He's paid the fine, but he's still got to go to court. You know, and they're going to make an example out of him. 
He's going to be made an example. And yes, it's coming here. There's other things. The Second Amendment, they're trying to whittle away on that now. There's other things going on, but are we, Mike Bradford and everybody else, per se, that is listening here at Spreaker, that is God really our center focus when all hell breaks loose? Are we going to flip out, or are we going to be led by God? Because I'm not, and my wife's not taking a COVID shot or COVID vaccine. Yeah, we'll have to just, uh, if he wants us to go to another country, and by that time, he'll have to uh, translate us over there. Poof, you know? And, hey, it happens. I've, we've known people. Colleen and I have known people that has been translated and then translated back, and they told their spouse where they went and what they did. And, you know, so that stuff still happens today. But that man that we knew that did that, he was always in contact with God, trying to walk a holy lifestyle at his work. Everywhere he went, he's loving on people, wasn't he, Colleen? Yeah. Just loving on people. He was colorblind. Just loving on everybody, God's creation. That's what we need to do. When I'm in Walmart, <laughs> you see me today over there. I, I've already talked to three people since I was in there, you know. And I talked to Alana, you know. And I'm just, I want to give out because the word says you've got to give out the word to keep it. That's what Jesus said. You've got to give it out. Don't hoard it. Just like the uh, Israelites, when the, the manna came down, they started hoarding it because they were self-centered. And they were hoarding all of it. What happened? It, went, it spoiled. He says, only get what you need for today. And we want to hoard things. We should be giving out. Be giving finances out to people who need it. Just, and I know people in here, they do that. But we need to do more of it. It's just a hurting world out there, just like the homeless. Uh, the veterans, that's another thing that really bothers me. Uh -huh. Veterans of the United States that fought in these conflicts. I'm not saying they're wars. The only wars that we've really had was World War One and World War Two. The rest of it's all been conflicts. Movie sections. Yeah. So, you know, it's uh, they come home, and where do they go? They're on the street. VA isn't taking care of them. That's where the church, the people of God, need to start taking care of these people. Yes, in Joplin, uh, I've read that they're going to have a VA a housing complex, but it's real small, but it's not, it's not enough. That's where people need to start ministering to people that are truly in need. You see them, or you see the lady that just got done, and I'll say this over here, she just got done shooting up in the bathroom at, at, at a store, and I'm not saying the store's name, but she was in there shooting up probably heroin or who knows what. But I just went over and gave her love. And I probably just ruined her high right there, you know. Because the Holy Ghost, that's what it's supposed to be. It just doused the fire, you know, just gave her love. You know, just talking to her as a human being. See, this is where we've come. The, the church has come short. The people's come short. Is not te telling people the truth. Just think, there's going to be, and there is a special place in hell for ministers that do not preach the truth. And when they go to hell, there is a special place they will be forever. Just think of that. All these people that they've led astray and not tell the truth, they did it for money as a business. I know of one right now over off some street. I'm not saying the name of it, but it's a big business. And that's not of God. But the place is packed out because you got the smoke machines, ripped jeans, and a young guy up there dancing around, uh, you know, whatever he's doing uh, on the message, you know. I'm thinking, and, and some other things that I'm not going into, but it's just not of God. And this is where the church, so-called, and Christians have got a bad name is because of the hypocrite people that name the majority of hypocrite people 
But there is the minority of people of the remnant church that is doing what it's supposed to be doing. But we need to do more because that's the thing. The remnant church is what's really pushing forward, pushing in, pushing into the spirit, doing what God has called us to do. But we have to take that time and go on. And if... uh, 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 Jason, could you read uh, 112 there, verse 1? 112, 1. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. That's right. Do we do that? Are we... And, I, and, I'm, and I'm pointing fingers back at me, you know? I, I need to do more. I know that. It, it's, you know, it's... Uh, Programming our mind, like it says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, is getting, you know, what it says. And reprogram our mind by the Word of God, like they're trying to do with, uh, what do they call it, uh, re-education camps here in America, with all these people coming in. This is ridiculous. This is totally ridiculous, but you see... Again, prayer is what changes things. You, If you don't pray and have a prayer lifestyle and a constant contact with praying in the Holy Ghost all the time, then your loss is a goose in a snowstorm going south or going west when you should be heading south. You know? Because you're not going to get anywhere and you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Folks that are out here on Spreaker... You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit because when you, you're getting, you're saved, you get a portion of the Holy Spirit. But when you get baptized with the evidence of speaking in tongues, that gives you the, the authority and the tools to beat the living snot out of the devil. Mm-hmm. To just keep on him, man. Because that is a coded, coded message. A heavenly message giving you total access, direct access to the throne room of God. How many of us have really thought of that when we're praying in the Spirit? We've got a hotline. We ask the Lord, you know, and just praying in the Spirit. What do, what message do I give today? You know, I got this message at 3.30 this afternoon in Walmart parking lot. <laughs> you know, just got to go with what, you know, in, in season, in, uh, instant in season and out of season. You got to go with it. Got to flow with the Holy Ghost, and that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, the people that are listening here at the meeting, as well as the ones here on Spreaker, that uh, need to get the Word and reprogram your mind, because I had to reprogram my mind when I came out of the world. I was dripping wet, green, uh, just didn't know uh, up or down. But all I knew, God uh, totally delivered me. From all them demons and alcohol there in the treatment center. But I kept digging because I love God so much because what he done for me at Calvary. See, this is what stuff that is not being brought forth. And we just had Passover, and, you know, in a resurrection uh, Sunday. And Jesus said when Lazarus was dead and, and, er, and his uh, sister, his sister, and everybody, they were flipping out, and like Jesus, what? And Jesus came here. Well, why do if you didn't get here sooner, you got here sooner, he'd be just fine. And Jesus said he's asleep. He's taking a nap, basically, because he, you know, went over there, and Jesus was in tune, even though he was God in the flesh, but he was in tune with the Father, and told, just commanded. Lazarus had come forth, and he did. It's the same thing when he went to the cross, same thing. He went to the cross, he just took a little nap. That's all he did, and he rose just like uh, Lazarus did. And he's alive and in our hearts for the ones that have accepted Jesus Christ into our lives and have the fear of God and doing what God has called us to do. You know, this is what is uh, so, so important is he's wanting, 
He knows we're, we're not perfect. But just look at the Israelites. They wandered around in a big, gigantic circle for 40 years. I think I've seen my footsteps here before, they probably said, you know. You know, but no. He erased all that. But they were, you know, they went around for 40 years because they were all into themselves. Bickering and fighting and moaning and groaning. And, and if they cut it short, and, you know, like when Moses went to the mountain, they were all invited to go to the mountain mountaintop. But they said, oh, no. You, Moses, you're going to represent us up there. And what happened when Moses come down? They were in the flesh again. You know, they were totally in the flesh. Yeah, worshiping, worshiping a false god. And then a Moses, I'm just speeding it up a little bit, but Moses said, okay, all over here that wants to serve God, you know, come over here. All the ones not to serve God, come over, uh, go, stand over there. And soon they all made their decisions. And the ones that were standing on the opposite side, the earth uh, opened up, swallowed them all, and covered it back up. That's the way God operates. That's a still the same God. The Holy Spirit, the one that was the uh, pillar by fire at night, and the cloud by day is still the one that lives inside of us. People don't realize that. We have, but we are so uh, in, in, uh, infiltrated by the enemy that our flesh, it keeps us from the total operation, Mike, from operating in the gifts of the Spirit and the miraculous things as Jesus said, greater works you'll do than I did in these end times. So we got to get our heads wrapped around that, that God is in us. And we do have the power, but I have to, like it says in the word, lay down my, cro uh, lay down my cross and follow Jesus, take up my cross and follow Jesus. That means all my worries and cares are all upon him. All I've got to do is focus forward in what the Spirit of God is telling me to do, the Holy Spirit, and moving forward. Yes, there's going to be things coming left or right, but he wants us to be tunnel vision, have a tunnel vision view, and keep moving forward with the Holy Spirit as our guide, just like it was with the Israelites. He's going to guide us through life. He's going to guide us through the hard times when we uh, don't take the vaccine and we can't get no money or don't have nothing, you know, and they're after us. He's going to keep us invisible. He's going to take care of his kids. Not the ones that were playing the games, but actually the ones that are doing the word of God, living a holy lifestyle before him. So what I'm... The Lord's really trying to say here is just do better, repent. If you've missed the mark, hey, we've all missed it. If you say you haven't missed it, you're a liar because we've all uh, all missed it. Even the big big preachers have missed it in their private lives. We don't know what goes behind closed doors. God does. That's the thing. Everything is being recorded. Even though this is being recorded on speaker, there's angels in here. I can't see them right now. But they're in here recording this thing. <coughs> they're recording it too. It's all, everything that we do and say is be, is recorded. And there's a video cam because he's going to come up and say, Mike, look what you did right over here. Oh, we need him to back that up, that video. Uh, you know, <laughs> back that up. And we will see ourselves. I'm really believing this. I can't say it by the word. But he's going to say, okay, see that? There, you're saying it right there. That came out of your mouth because everything is being recorded, mm -hmm. documented. If he's already made a book with our name on it from the begin from our beginning to our end, I'm still asking him to show me parts of that so I can get on track. And that's what we need to do. Should ask God because he's already wrote books on us from the beginning and to the end, what we're supposed to be doing for him. So we need 
that fellowship. We need to make him our friend like Elijah did. Elijah made him his friend. What happened? He got tra- uh, basically translated by, the, you know, the uh, chariot came down and he took off and went to heaven. You know, because he was in David. Look at David. King David. The things that he did, but in the end, he uh, during all that stuff, he repented. Sure, he had consequences out of his choices, but he repented and kept on for God. And Solomon come along, and God gave him everything, but he got off track in the flesh with women and mixed-breeded in marriage, which costed the whole kingdom at that time. So we just got to keep on with what God has called us to do. That's all he's asking each and every one of us to do is get closer to him because what's coming down the line, you think, oh, I think this would never happen in in the, in this nation. We never thought this would happen right now, what's going on in this nation. This is the tip of the iceberg. See, this is the tip of the iceberg of what's getting ready to happen. Man. Our, our things are getting taken away from us, but in... In all, we're waiting for the knight in, in shining armor to ride in President Trump and fix it all. No, we're looking at a man still. This is why I don't listen to any more uh, prophecies on politics or any of that stuff because God's going to have his way, and he's having his way right now because of the condition of this nation spiritually. Still allow abortion is still going on. Still the homosexuality is going on. All this stuff, you know, you, you wonder how much longer is God going to put up with this? Well, let me tell you folks, I can't give you a date or time, but he, he's really uh, ticked off. That's the nice way to say it. He's ticked. And he's going to use judgment. Now, and judgment is comes by natural things of the uh, earth like meteor showers, uh, earthquakes, earthquakes. Volcanoes. yeah, volcanoes, and we've got <laughs> rain, flooding, excessive flooding, or, or, or the sea level could come up more and take away the coastal areas where 90% of the people of the U.S. live. In diverse places. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you were, it's coming. This is the thing, you know, that uh, here again, and I'm not blaming nobody, but they're not preparing the people like God's wanting to prepare you, each and every one of us that's listening here on Spreaker and here at the meeting. He's wanting to prepare us for what is coming. And and I'm going to say it right out. There is no, I guess there is a rapture, but it's going to be in God's timing and how he wants it done. It's not going to get a get out of jail free deal. We're going to have to go, you just like the disciples, they had to go to the end to death. It might be the same way with us. You know, I'm ready to go home. That's all I can say. I'm ready to go home. I'm with, I'm okay with with dying. People in this room should be okay with dying because that means you're in a right spot with God. Because your mansion is under construction right now, but... When it's your expiration date time comes up, you know, you go to the store, you know, there's always an expiration date on food. Well, each and every one of us sitting in here has an expiration date. You know, we all do. We don't know when it is. That's why Jesus says, live one day at a time, one moment at a time, and follow him. That's all I have. Very good.